It's now been two games, the Cleveland Browns Deshaun Watson experiment. And while there's still plenty of time for, as is Watson's favorite activity in a massage parlor, him to turn around, it's looking like this trade might have been a massive L for a Cleveland organization who has become comfortably amicable with his letter throughout this millennium. This is not a typical L for this Browns team. You know, normally they field a team of lovable nobodies and fumbling draft busts that we all wish to succeed while ultimately knowing that they won't. But in this situation, the Cleveland Browns, in win now mode, stuck their neck out for a guy mired in sexual assault allegations. They went with the unlovable winner, and if he does not win, then he is nothing but unlovable. They risked the good grace their organization had accumulated over the years with the hopes that the raucous roars of victory would drown out the persistent cries of immorality, but now with Watson's poor performance, these cries are louder than ever. Or are they? Upon his return to Houston, Deshaun Watson gets a mix of boos and cheers coming out of the visiting tunnel. Loud boos at first, then some cheers. So you could say you got a happy ending? Also, coming out of the visiting tunnel sounds like one of the allegations against him. But it really seems like most fans, even Houston fans, no longer really care about it. Deshaun Watson leaves a complicated legacy with the Texans. The first round exits, contract holdout, and disgraceful exit from the team have left a bitter taste in some fans' mouths. A bitter taste? Jeez, even the fans weren't safe from this man. But I mean, you hear it there. I mean, yeah, there's a sexual assault hangout, but the fact that he gave up a 24-0 lead to the Chiefs, I just can't excuse that. At the end of the day, no quarterback is a sure thing anymore. I mean, the Broncos found that out firsthand. They traded two first-round picks for Russell Wilson, who had been one of the best quarterbacks in the league for over a decade, and signed him to a lucrative contract extension before he even plays a snap. He pretty much immediately falls off a cliff, playing badly, taking horrible sacks, getting yelled at by teammates, as at this current moment, the Broncos are giving the Seahawks the number two overall pick. The Seahawks' relationship with Wilson had gone sour, he'd stirred up a bit of drama, although, to be perfectly clear, to nowhere near the degree that Deshaun Watson had, and they cut ties and pretty much immediately found themselves their franchise quarterback in Geno Smith, who, to be fair, does have a recent DUI incident, but he's had no issue putting together safe drives this season, as he's among the league leaders in passer rating. The Texans have the opportunity to draft their very own Geno Smith. They'll have the first pick in the draft this year. The Browns, on the other hand, I mean, they're down another first-round draft pick the year after this, as well as this year's and last year's. And if Deshaun Watson goes full Russell Wilson, they could stand to lose a serious high draft pick next year. They gave him the largest contract in NFL history before the start of the season, knowing already that he was going to miss a large chunk of the season, which he did, initially receiving a six-game suspension by an arbiter and former U.S. District Judge, aptronymically named Sue Lewis Robinson, and then receiving an 11-game suspension from the NFL and being fined $5 million, which is an absolutely seismic portion of his $250 million contract. They traded for a guy who had been excellent, sure, but had also taken an NFL-leading number of sacks over his prior three seasons. I guess he just wanted those masseuses to know what it was like. And had sat out the prior season even before his suspension, coming back on 700 days of rest. And they had Watson replace a guy. Now, I'm not saying that he's Geno Smith, but what I am saying is that he's a guy. Jacoby Brissett. This guy is universally beloved. I mean, his biggest controversy is having a loose understanding of astrophysics, and he's low-key been balling out. He's got an 89.1 passer rating over his games this season. I think it's safe to say that the Browns' issues lie mainly outside of his performance. And this is the type of guy where, even if he's doing badly, at least he's an easy guy to get around. And maybe he is the next Geno Smith. I mean, Geno's 32 years old. He sat for three years behind Russ. Now, I'm not saying that the Browns should trade Watson saying that they shouldn't have traded for him in the first place. I mean, who knows? Maybe Deshaun Watson's just sore. Stiff after 700 days out. Maybe he just needs to relax, to have someone work the tight muscles and the kinks out for him. Okay, maybe not. People love to make memes about how fucked up things in Ohio are, but you know, they might be onto something. I mean, look at their quarterbacks. First Big Ben, now Deshaun Watson. I mean, what next? Are we gonna see the Bengals sign Matt Ariza and complete the cycle? So, my sources have just informed me that Pittsburgh is actually in Pennsylvania. And to them I say, Close enough. I mean, come on, I'm, I'm sure there's some bleed over and lack of saneness. In all seriousness, I support the victims on this issue. Deshaun Watson should not be playing in the NFL, and that's not even considering how bad he's been. And as a Seahawks fan, I can personally say that I'm very glad that Geno Smith is our quarterback instead of this guy. I mean, drunk driving I can excuse. I'm kidding, that's a joke. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you're hashtag Team Geno Smith for MVP, or if you think the earth is round. See, the great thing about that is that no one can tell which one it is that you think. I'm doing more writing for other things recently, so keep an eye out for some YouTube shorts that I'll probably upload. New video whenever and on whatever I feel like. Connor Hagerman out.